Hi, everyone. Welcome to the FinEdge 0.12 release. Today, I just wanted to walk you through the release notes uh, to show you all the new features and fixes, and also give a short demo on some of the features that we include. So like always, we publish the release notes on GitHub, so I would always recommend uh, checking it out. You can see what the full list of changes are included. As you can see, there's a lot of work always going on in ThinEdge. Um, and then we try to make a kind of like summary of what are the most interesting bits. Um, but I think it's always worthwhile to kind of peruse the, the full list because there might be some things that we thought no one was interested in, but they are, um, whether it's about updates in our CA, CI pipeline or like testing framework or whatever. Um, I think there's some good tidbits in there. So what's included in 0 0.12, like the main feature highlights, uh, so the biggest feature that is included is the support for configurable mappers. So you can control which topics the map is subscribed to and then um, control what data is then propagated to what cloud. So in a multi-cloud kind of setup, so if you have both AWS and Comilosity or Azure, um, you can control which data goes where. So it really means you can use your cloud resources efficiently as well, so you're not duplicating um, data or using any kind of um, resources unnecessarily. Then we included a refactoring and a new command, so a new tedge init command, um, which streamlines the way we initialize all of the file system when we install um, ThinEdge. Um, and also when any of the components start, that they will actually do a lot of the initialization at runtime, um, which then reduces the um, the chance of error that maybe if you accidentally delete files, and then when the agent starts again, it will recreate what it needs to. Uh, so that's about improving the story, the installation story, and also a bit of like the robustness um, to make sure it doesn't then fail until you have to run it manually. Then we have a great feature, which is um, supporting resuming downloads. So this kind of partial downloading function. Um, so especially if you're downloading like large firmware files, um, they're typically, you know, 100, over 100 megabytes. Um, so if you have any kind of temporary network interruptions, that will resume the download where it was left at. We don't do this in, indefinitely, so eventually we will fail if you have prolonged network outages um, to kind of prevent this kind of stale state and corrupted state kind of problem. Um, we do will start again after a period of time. Um, however, for those kind of intermediate downloads, um, then it's efficiently downloading um, the bytes. And then so, you know, if it's keep on dropping out, then you'll eventually download it anyway. We've also made the, the handling for the custom operations is also has now a configurable timeout setting. So this is great to protect you against um, unexpected problems that you, you may have um, introduced in your custom handlers or someone has given you a custom handler. You can kind of restrict how long should it run for. And if it exceeds that time, then Edge will then kill it. So it will send it a, um, a seek, or it will do a graceful shutdown. So we'll send it a first signal, um, and then I think a seek quit, if I recall correctly. Um, and then if it still doesn't shut down in 30 seconds, it will then do a um, seek kill, like a hard seek kill. Uh, so this is kind of improving to make sure that, you know, um, bad custom handlers don't then corrupt the whole system. We've also made a lot of improvements with um, how we handle kind of retrying or failed HTTP requests for specific um, error codes. So if any of the error codes listed here um, are encountered, we will retry um, again. So that typically happens if maybe the token is stale. Um, so that will trigger a token refresh and then we'll try to re-download it again. Again, we won't do this indefinitely. Um, we'll give up after X number of retries. Um, however, at least kind of gives you more chance of success when trying to download it. Then we've also done some improvements to the ABT software management plugins. 
um, by adding some kind of filter criteria available for either name filtering or maintainer filtering um, based on the meter information provided by Debian packages. Um, and both accept kind of regular expressions. So you can kind of then tweak and say, well, I'm only interested in the Tedge packages. So you can then craft a regular expression to then only return the Tedge or every package starting with Tedge. Um, and then that will be then sent in the software list. Um, so that means you can kind of reduce and focus on the important bits. You know, if you don't care about what library versions are running um, on the initial step, you need to then say, hey, these packages are interesting to me and then propagate them back to the platform. And then we've just added a bit of um, aligning. So we're doing things uh, the Linux way that we're using a sim link um, for the Tedge APT plugin and putting it in the software management plugins. That's a kind of a minor feature. And then like I always have a few fixes. Um, so really take, please take the time to actually read through the release notes because um, there's enough information that should then answer most of your questions. So then moving on to the demo, I'm going to show you the new feature with the configurable Tedge Mapper MQT topics. Let me just set my screens up. OK, so on the right side, I have two consoles connected to the same Raspberry Pi 4. And I just want to verify the version that I have set up, so I'm running 0.12. OK, everything's good. This particular device actually has two things running. So it's sorry, two cloud connections. Um, so I have a cloud connection to AWS and Comlocity. So if I just show how to publish a measurement, I'm just going to publish to the Tedge topics, to Tedge measurements. Let me use 15. And then we should see here that the measurement then should be published to, so this is the AWS IoT core. So we will publish 15. We can see I'm just using the test client here uh, that they that AWS provide. And we can see that the message has been propagated. And then the same message, so measurement should also be available um, in Convolocity. So here, and we should see 15. So 15. So to kind of show what's happening under the hood, um, we can actually on the local device, we can also just subscribe to the the cloud topics. So the the topics which are basically represented and published through the Mosquito Bridge, which is then facilitating all of these cloud connections. Um, so here I'm just using Mosquito Sub, and I'm subscribing to two topics. So I can do this in one line with Mosquito Sub. Um, so I'm subscribing to all of the Comlocity topics. So the local topics, which then get go through the bridge, and the AWS topics. I'm just using a specially crafted format string here. So because I want to show what topic am I actually publishing to, and also the payload. Uh, so this is just standard kind of um, Mosquito setup. So here, when I publish that single local Tedg topic, or to the Tedg measurements topic, I can see that that's actually enacted two outgoing messages. So one for Comlocity, as denoted by the ACYY forward slash prefix. And it's done some conversion for me to get it into the Comlocity format. So each cloud could have different formats, so that's OK. And then for the AWS, it's published on this specific topic. And this is the payload. So there's similarities, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the same because each cloud has different requirements. So if I look at the, yeah, so that reflects this message and this payload. So now I'm publishing one measurement. So from the side, it's a little bit unexpected that I'm now publishing to two kind of different clouds. And not only is it sometimes a bit misleading, um, it's not a very efficient use of my resources. Um, so basically, generally, if you publish stuff to the cloud, you're probably paying for ingestion rates or whatever, um, or even like storage um, associated to those ingested messages. Um, so publishing the message twice kind of then doubles my cost more or less. So it would probably make more sense if I said, well, 
maybe I don't want to publish the measurements to AWS and Comelocity. I only want to publish it to AWS um, because maybe I'm using one of the um, like machine learning stuff for ingestion and doing some AI uh, on that. So they have a nice pipeline there that you can then connect it to. Um, so maybe that makes sense in my in this business case that I have and is maybe more cost efficient in this particular um, instance. Um, so what I'm going to do is limit or tell Thin Edge to only publish the measurements to AWS and then only the measurements and then everything else will be done by Comelocity. So we can see kind of the settings which are used to control this by just using the Tedge config command. So I'll just give a bit more space. So if I list the existing configuration, so this is really useful because it also shows you what the defaults are. So you can always, at all points in time, you can see, hey, what happens when the thin edge components read from the Tedge config? This is the state that they're actually going to read. So we can see here that we've added some new configuration properties. So for example, for each mapper, it will have a dot topics setting. So I have a comlocity that's CAY dot topics. And these topics are the default subscription that each of the mappers have. And then the AWS, and you'll see that they're basically using the same kind of defaults. We chose this as a default setting because maybe not everyone's running a hybrid kind of cloud setup or a multi-cloud setup. Uh, so we figured, well, if you know people want to just do AWS or um, Comlocity or Azure, um, that they want everything published from the Tedge topics. Um, but it's quite easy to change. You could either update it through the Tedge config set command and basically copy that and do like a CSV list of uh, things. However, because this is quite, it's quite a longer, like larger setting. So I'm actually going to edit the TOML uh, for this because it's a little bit more convenient in this case. So if I, I've pre-prepared this and just commented it out the settings. So I'm just going to open up the ETC TEDG, TEDG TOML uh, with them. And so at the moment, so these are the lines which I'm going to uncomment. So we can see here we have topics um, and then we, I just basically copy pasted what was the default settings and then added that everything but the measurements. And then for the AWS, I only included the measurements. So let me just uncomment it. Okay, so it's now uncommented. Um, so we have the topics. So they let's just double check. I have proper commas everywhere. Yep. Okay, so I'll save that and quit. And then I just need to restart the mappers. Um, the reason why we still need to reset the mappers because the subscriptions usually done when the um, the mappers start up, and generally it's not something that you want to be too dynamic with because generally you've already made the decision what mappers like what data should go to what kind of cloud backends, so there's no need to kind of do this dynamic and dynamic things generally make it harder to debug because you're not sure what state it actually has in its memory, and that can just complicate things. Um, of course, if that is a requirement for some people in the future, uh, we're more than happy to kind of uh, discuss that point further and implement it in the future. So I'm just going to restart the mappers. Um, just a little tidbit of system D knowledge. Um, you can actually do some wildcard restarts um, you just have to be careful that you have quoting um, so the shell doesn't do shell expansion because the star is also a shell expansion character. So you have to kind of protect it from the shell, um, but you can kind of do this. You can't do all services, um, but for this instance, because I wanted to restart the CAY and um, AWS mappers, it's quite convenient. So I've restarted that now. So let me just republish just going to restart the subscriptions. So now I'm going to do the same publish I did before, but I'm going to change the value to 16 so we can just see a difference. 
And what we're expecting is, because it's always good before you execute something to, you know, say, what do we expect? Um, so we should only have one entry come out here, and that should be like AWS slash something. Then I should see something arrive here in the cloud, and I should not see something published here because I've configured it not to accept that. So if I publish that, you can see the 16 message has come through. Yes, we only have one entry here, not the comlosity entry anymore. And if we just reload the measurements to be sure, we shouldn't see the 16. So yeah, the last one was 15 because that was when I last published. So we're now using our cloud resources efficiently. Um, I'm free to pick and choose now, so I can redirect data wherever I want, um, which is really, really convenient um, because then you can also adapt the clouds and make the clouds work for you, for your IoT solution. So it no longer means, you know, I have to develop my IoT solution in one cloud. You can also use multiple clouds. That's fine as well um, because different clouds offer different features um, and that changes over time. So it's really good and you can adapt to, you know, when new features get brought out and really reduce your time to market uh, significantly. So that concludes the live demo. Uh, actually, while I'm here, maybe I'll just quickly show the, the Tejanit command. Um, so like any of the commands, you can use the inbuilt help and you can see what commands are available. Um, so we have a new entry here. So if I do init, and then I can see what options uh, did work, um, what options are available. Um, so we also have the ability to set the owner of the folder. So you can use a non-default setting if you wish, um, but that's more meant for kind of custom installations. So if you didn't want to use Ted user, but then you do need to kind of start the services yourself. Um, and configure the users so they kind of reflect the permissions on that folder. And so with these Tej commands, um, so the Tej init commands, because we've simplified it immensely, that means that previously, some of you may have noticed um, that we previously did something like this, like a Tej init. There, so these are going to be deprecated. Um, so I believe when you run it, I think I just have to stop the service first, which agent, because it won't let me run this otherwise. So let's do Tej agent init. And we can see that we even receive a kind of deprecation notice. It still works. Uh, oh, sorry, it, it's basically a no op. Um, so it won't break any of your kind of scripts and it will give you a friendly reminder, say, hey, we're deprecating this. Um, so we'll be removing in a future release. Um, we'll probably be looking to remove it in the 1.0 release, which is scheduled for end of the year. Um, so just be aware and make sure you can update your installation scripts if you're using it already. And um, just adjust it to using the init uh, method instead. So it's really just one single init you need now, and that's it. Um, so it's uh, really, really convenient. Great. So I think that was that concludes the demo now. So um, thanks for listening. And as always, um, if you have any issues, feel free to contact us through or like open questions through Discord um, or GitHub. Don't be shy about posting like issues or um, feature requests. We're always happy to accept new ones and open up the discussion. Uh, and if there's something that you can't kind of communicate publicly, you can also reach out to us um, through Discord and we can um, set up a private chat um, or even a call to kind of discuss the requirements in, in detail. Thanks. I hope you've enjoyed the demo and look forward to presenting more releases in the future. Thanks, everyone.